using the following libraries. IO for managing information. Request for using HTTP communication, in this case for downloading the dataset. NumPy for managing the dataset. And finally, Matplotlib will help us to make awesome graphics. Let's continue. In this case, we are going to download the dataset. Please note that we are making comments using the hashtag. To download the dataset, we are going to use request and get. Here, we need a URL. And also, we will need a variable. We are creating a variable in which we will be saved this information. I have already an URL. This is from the Steinmetz dataset. Now, we will check if this is right. So, if the status code of this is not equal to 200, this means 200 is a code which says it is all right. This link, it is ready for downloading. So if this is not OK, then we will print error downloading. Now we need an else. In this case, we are retrieving the content from R. This content needs to be managed. So we will be using IO bytes. Now that we have the bytes from this content, we need to load this information from or using NumPy. This has a specific format called Pickle. So we are saying that pickle should be true. We are retrieving a specific variable called spikes times. So we are selecting that information inside uh, this content. And finally, we are assigning this to a variable. Let's call it again. And that's all. This should be working. I have corrected uh, this code because the variable was named spike. And also, to access the content, it is not necessary to use a uh, parenthesis. OK. So with this code, we are loading the information inside spike times. Now we need to explore what is the shape and the type of this variable. To do it, let's use a type we can see that it is a numpy array and also we can use shape. Let's try something like this. Great, so it says it has 734 elements inside. Let's try to look for the first element and now the second one. We can see that it has a different shape. So let's try to do a for loop to dip into this idea. We need to consider um, a number of spikes or indexes that we are looking for. In this case, I will call it number of neurons. And we will just pick some of them. Let's see the first and maybe the second one, the third one, and 
why not the 100 index. And now let's see what is inside this index. So let's call it number inside. And here we will be using something called a slice from 0 to 4. We just want to see the first four elements inside. After this, we can do a for loop for in, in n neurons. So for each element inside n neurons, let's make a print. We will be using uh, some strings. So neuron and we will be using something called format. So inside of this bracket, we will be retrieving the value of i. But here we need to use normal brackets. Something like this. Okay. So this will be printing the number of the neuron. But we need more. So why not also printing what is inside this neuron? So let's see if we use spikes times we use i and we want the shape of this element and also we want the first four elements inside so again we will be using spike times i but now we will be using number of elements inside. In this case, we just want four, the first of them, the first four of them. Finally, we will be separating this print using something called sep and making a, a space. Okay, so we can notice that the neuron zero has 826 elements. And also we can see the first four elements inside. Also about the neuron one, neuron two, and so on. This allows us to conclude that the um, shape inside the spikes varies according to the number of neuron. So the shape is different from each neuron. Let's move on. Now we want to know the number of neurons in this data set and also how many times uh, they spiked or how many spikes has each neuron inside. To do this, let's create a new variable, in this case called um, number of neurons. And we will be using the function called len to obtain the, uh, the length of the, in this case of spikes, spikes time. Then we want to know how many spikes are inside each neuron. So let's call it number spikes. per neuron, and here we will be using a special trick. First, first let's use a for loop for each element in spikes times. We want to do something, and we want to calculate the length, in this case, 
of each element because each element is, as a matter of fact, uh, the neuron. And we want to store this information inside this variable. So, let's rename this for neuron. For each neuron, we will be calculating its length. And finally, we want to print this information. So we will be using something quite similar. Like before, here we will be writing plain uh, strings, in this case, a number of neurons. If you want total number of neurons, and we will be using uh, this format. And here we will be calling the variable number of neurons. Also, we want to print the number of spikes inside each neuron. So, number of spikes. And let's use again this format and and let's call in this occasion number of spikes per neuron. We will be using again a separation. That's all. Let's try it. Okay, we have an error. We don't need to use this comma. And great. But look, we have almost each value for each neuron because we have 700 and so on neurons. So let's reduce this value. Okay, so in this lecture, we learn how to download a data set, how to retrieve it using request.get. Also, we know about how to use shape. And we implement several for loops to look inside uh, this variable. Also, we calculated the number of neurons and the number of spikes for each neuron inside. So in the following lecture, we will be exploring more deep into this data set. Thank you and see you later.